What if we could take so many digital samples that the gaps between them became effectively meaningless? This is exactly the idea behind high-resolution digital audio, a set of formats designed to minimize the compromises we've discussed by capturing sound with far greater precision than standard digital formats. Imagine listening to a familiar jazz recording and suddenly noticing the subtle brush of a guitar's fingers across strings or the gentle breath of a saxophonist between note details that remain hidden until experienced through high-resolution audio. While CD-quality audio has served as the consumer standard for decades, high-resolution formats dramatically. Expand these boundaries with specifications like 24-bit 96 kHz and 24-bit 192 kHz, offering significantly enhanced detail. A 192 kHz sample rate theoretically captures frequencies up to 96 kHz, extending far beyond human hearing capabilities, which max out around 20 kHz for most people. This seemingly excessive approach serves a practical purpose. Real-world digital filters require a transition band where frequencies gradually attenuate rather than cutting off precisely at the Nyquist limit. Higher sampling rates create a comfortable buffer zone around the frequencies we actually hear, allowing engineers to design gentler filters that introduce fewer artifacts in the audible spectrum. These formats also enhance temporal resolution, the precision with which we can locate sounds in time. CD quality sampling takes measurements approximately every 23 microseconds, while 192 kHz sampling narrows this to about 5 microseconds. This improved precision may better preserve the attack of instruments like drums and plucked strings, providing a more accurate sense of when each sound begins, that initial crack of a snare or pluck of a guitar string that gives instruments their distinctive character. The jump from 16 to 24 bits addresses quantization issues by expanding from 65,536 possible amplitude values to approximately 16.7 million. This expansion lowers the noise floor from around minus 96 dB to approximately minus 144 dB, well below both human hearing thresholds and the ambient noise in even the quietest recording environments. The expanded dynamic range preserves subtle details and quiet passages with remarkable precision, allowing you to hear the full decay of a piano note or the ambient room sound around a vocalist. The mathematics suggest that properly implemented 24 bits when 92 kilohertz recording and playback eliminates nearly all measurable technical limitations of digital audio. But can people actually hear these improvements? The research presents mixed conclusions. Some studies, including Meyer and Moran's 2007 research, found that listeners identified high-resolution audio correctly only 49.8% of the time, essentially random guessing. Critics have questioned whether the equipment or specific music selections in these tests might have obscure potential differences. More recent studies show trained listeners sometimes identifying high-resolution audio at rates better than chance, particularly with percussion, acoustic instruments with complex harmonics, and recordings featuring wide dynamic range. The practical realities of music production further complicate the picture. Many recordings undergo compression during mixing and mastering, limiting the dynamic range that high bit depths theoretically preserve. Pop and rock recordings are frequently mastered for loudness rather than subtle dynamic nuances, potentially reducing high-resolution benefits compared to classical or jazz recordings. How most people consume music adds another layer of complexity. Streaming services typically compress audio to save bandwidth, negating many high-resolution advantages. Even services marketed as high-resolution often use compression that discards information. Many listeners use equipment from basic earbuds to Bluetooth speakers that introduces limitations far more significant than the difference between CD quality and high-resolution formats. For casual listening in noisy environments like cars or public transportation, these theoretical benefits likely make little difference. However, for focused listening on quality equipment in quiet spaces, some listeners report meaningful improvements with high-resolution audio. High-resolution digital formats essentially attempt to solve digital audio problems by taking measurements with such frequency and precision that any compromises fall well outside human perception. Engineers have created a buffer zone around digital audio limitations, ensuring that if there are still differences between high-resolution digital and analog formats, they likely stem from other factors, recording processes, mastering decisions, or playback equipment. From a technical standpoint, high-resolution formats address most theoretical limitations of digital audio. From a perceptual standpoint, results vary. 
Some listeners hear significant improvements, while others detect no difference, suggesting benefits might depend on specific recording techniques, musical content, listening environments, and individual hearing sensitivity. What seems increasingly clear is that high-resolution digital formats have pushed technical limitations below the threshold of human perception for most listeners in most situations. If preferences for analog formats persist, they likely stem from factors beyond basic sampling and quantization issues, perhaps the different mastering approaches used for vinyl, or the pleasing distortions that analog equipment introduces. This reveals a real trade-off at the heart of the digital audio revolution. If high-resolution digital can theoretically match or exceed analog's technical performance, then the choice between formats isn't primarily about sound quality anymore. It's about how we want to experience music, the convenience and accessibility of the convenience revolution. Would you trade a small amount of sound quality for the ability to carry every song ever recorded in your pocket? This isn't a hypothetical question. It's the bargain we've all accepted, often without realizing it. The digital audio revolution represents one of the most dramatic transformations in how humans experience music since the invention of recording itself. Consider what music consumption looked like just 30 years ago. If you wanted to hear a specific song, you needed to own a physical copy, a vinyl record, cassette tape, or CD. Your music collection was limited by physical space and financial constraints. Discovering new music meant radio, recommendations from friends, or taking chances on unknown artists at record stores. Each listening experience required deliberate action, selecting an album, placing it on a turntable or into a player, and committing to at least a full side of music. Today, that world seems almost unimaginably restrictive. The average smartphone can access virtually every commercially released song in history through streaming services. Your entire music collection travels with you everywhere. New releases arrive instantly, and algorithms continuously suggest music based on your listening habits. You can skip any song within seconds if it doesn't immediately capture your interest. This transformation happened with remarkable speed. The MP3 format became widely adopted in the late 1990s, the iPod revolutionized portable music in 2001, and streaming services gained mainstream adoption in the 2010s. In just two decades, we shifted from physical media dominating music consumption to a world where many young listeners have never owned a physical album. Music has become ubiquitous, accessible anywhere with an internet connection. Your favorite songs accompany you through commutes, workouts, and travels. The financial model has transformed from individual album purchases to monthly subscriptions offering unlimited access. The barrier to music discovery has virtually disappeared, allowing listeners to explore genres and artists they might never have encountered in the physical media era. Digital technology has democratized music production and distribution. Musicians can create professional quality recordings on laptops without expensive studio time. Distribution platforms allow independent artists to release music globally without record label support. This has sparked an explosion of creativity and diversity, with niche genres finding dedicated audiences that would have been impossible to reach in the physical retail era. But this convenience revolution comes with trade-offs. The transition from physical to digital formats has fundamentally changed our relationship with music in ways both subtle and profound. Physical music collections represent significant investments of money, space, and identity. Owning records or CDs meant making choices about which music deserved a permanent place in your life. The albums on your shelf made a statement about who you were. Listening was often an attentive, dedicated activity, sitting in front of speakers, studying album artwork, reading liner notes, and experiencing an album as a complete artistic statement. With unlimited digital access, music has become more abundant but potentially less precious. When any song is instantly available, the commitment to each listening experience can diminish. The average streaming service user skips a track after just 14 seconds if it doesn't immediately appeal. Album-oriented listening has declined, with playlists and single tracks becoming the dominant consumption method. The physical artifacts, album artwork, liner notes, lyric sheets, have largely disappeared from the experience. This abundance raises questions about how deeply we connect with music in the streaming era. Research suggests that unlimited options can sometimes lead to less satisfaction rather than more. Listeners might spend more time searching and skipping than deeply engaging with any particular piece of music. The paradox of choice suggests that too many options can actually reduce enjoyment rather than enhance it.
The streaming economic model presents challenges for artists, paying significantly less per list than physical sales. Many musicians earn fractions of a cent per stream, requiring millions of plays to generate meaningful income. This has pushed artists toward touring as their primary revenue source, a model that became particularly problematic during the pandemic. Interestingly, some listeners are seeking a middle ground. Vinyl records have experienced a remarkable resurgence, with sales growing consistently since 2007. Many music fans maintain both digital streaming subscriptions for everyday listening and vinyl collections for music they particularly value. This hybrid approach suggests different formats serve different purposes rather than one replacing the other entirely. Digital technology has enabled higher quality streaming options that attempt to bridge the gap. Services now often lossless in high resolution streaming that preserve more of the original recording quality. Better digital to analog converters and consumer devices help minimize technical limitations. This technological evolution means that even as we've embraced convenience, the quality gap has steadily narrowed. Is the convenience worth the subtle sound quality sacrifice? For most listeners, the trade-off has been overwhelmingly worthwhile. The ability to access virtually any recorded music instantly, anywhere, represents a kind of musical freedom unimaginable a generation ago. Music has become more accessible, diverse, and integrated into our daily lives than ever before. Understanding these trade-offs doesn't diminish either format. Recognizing digital audio's technical compromises helps us appreciate the remarkable engineering that makes this convenience possible. Similarly, understanding what might be lost in digital conversion explains the enduring appeal of analog formats for certain listening experiences. This knowledge allows us to make informed choices about how we experience music. We can choose streaming for its convenience while recognizing its limitations. We can choose vinyl for dedicated listening sessions where ritual and potential sound quality benefits matter more. We can appreciate digital audio as the brilliant technical compromise it is, sacrificing theoretical perfection in ways most listeners never notice to deliver practical benefits that have transformed how we experience music. The beautiful compromise. What if the lie of digital audio isn't a flaw, but one of the most brilliant technological compromises ever made? Throughout this exploration of how digital audio works, we frame sampling and quantization as lies, ways that digital formats deviate from the continuous reality of sound waves. But perhaps we should view these not as flaws, but as ingenious trade-offs that enable a revolution in how humans experience music. The engineers who developed digital audio in the 1970s and 80s faced an immense challenge. They needed to find a way to represent infinitely variable sound waves the limitations of storage, processing power, and digital systems made capturing everything impossible. So they asked a different question. What aspects of sound matter most to human perception, and what can we safely discard? This shift in perspective transformed the problem. Instead of attempting perfect reproduction, a technical impossibility, they sought perceptual equivalence. Could they create digital sound that human ears would find indistinguishable from the original, even if the waveforms looked different under analysis? The science of psychoacoustics, how humans perceive sound, became central to this effort. Researchers discovered that our hearing has specific limitations and patterns. We're more sensitive to some frequencies than others. We can't hear phase differences in certain situations. Our perception of one sound can mask our ability to hear another. These insights provided a roadmap for what could be preserved and what could be approximated. The Nyquist theorem provided the first key insight. By sampling at twice the highest frequency humans can hear, we could theoretically capture all the frequencies relevant to our perception. This means that sampling at 44.1 kHz allowed the capture of frequencies up to 22.05 kHz, comfortably above human hearing limits of around 20 kHz. When you listen to a CD, you're experiencing sound with frequencies that span the entire range of what your ears can detect. Bit depth calculations followed similar thinking. Engineers determined that 16 bits provided approximately 96 dB of dynamic range, the difference between the quietest and loudest sounds the system could reproduce. This exceeded the range between the threshold of hearing and the threshold of pain in typical listening environments. The standard aligned with human perceptual limits to deliver emotionally impactful experiences. These decisions reflected a profound understanding that perfect technical reproduction might be less important than perceptual equivalence. By focusing on what humans can actually hear, 
Rather what test equipment could measure, engineers created systems that use available resources efficiently while still delivering satisfying results. The history of digital audio reveals a series of calculated compromises. The compact disc 44.1 kHz 16-bit standard represented a balance point between quality and practicality when established in the 1980s. MP3 compression took this compromise further, using perceptual encoding to identify and discard sounds that would likely be masked by other, more prominent sounds in the recording. This reduced file sizes dramatically while maintaining subjective quality that many listeners found acceptable. What's remarkable is how well these compromises worked. The compact disc delivered sound quality that satisfied listeners for decades. MP3s enabled the portable digital music revolution. Streaming services built on these foundations now deliver music to billions of listeners worldwide. These technologies succeeded because their creators understood a profound truth. Perfect reproduction might be the wrong goal. The purpose of recorded music is to create an emotionally meaningful experience for the listener. Choosing between analog and digital formats is like choosing between oil painting and photography. Neither is inherently superior. They're different art forms with unique characteristics. Photography can capture precise details that painting cannot, while painting conveys emotion through brush strokes and texture that photography might miss. Similarly, digital audio captures certain elements with remarkable precision, while analog formats preserve qualities like the continuous nature of sound waves that some listeners cherish. Digital audio preserves frequency response across the audible spectrum. Noise floors can be pushed below audibility. Timing precision can be maintained to microseconds. These achievements matter tremendously for some music and listening situations. Analog formats preserve other qualities, particular forms of distortion that some find pleasing, and a physical connection to the recording process. These characteristics might matter more for other musical styles or listening preferences. Both analog and digital formats deserve places in our musical lives. Understanding their differences allows us to choose the right tool for each listening situation rather than declaring one approach universally superior. I encourage you to experiment with different formats yourself. If you've never experienced vinyl, visit a friend who has a good turntable. If you've been streaming compressed audio, try a high-resolution digital option. Compare the same recording across different formats and systems. Your personal preferences matter more than technical specifications. Why is the history of recording a story of beautiful technical compromises? Because engineers found ways to preserve what matters most while discarding what humans can't perceive. They balance technical limitations against perceptual realities to create systems that deliver meaningful musical experiences. Now that you understand what's really happening in your headphones, what will you listen for? Perhaps you'll pay more attention to how different formats reproduce your favorite music. Maybe you'll experiment with various listening approaches to find what brings you the most enjoyment. Or perhaps you'll simply appreciate the remarkable technical achievements that make today's musical abundance possible. The next time you stream music, remember what's actually happening. Those perfect sounding songs are clever approximations. Thousands of snapshots stitched together to mimic continuous sound waves. This brilliant technical compromise changed how we experience music forever. Try this experiment. Play your favorite track on vinyl then streaming. Notice the warmth of analog's continuous waveforms versus digital's precision. What subtle textures emerge? Knowing what's happening beneath the surface transforms your relationship with music. The choice between digital convenience and analog connection isn't about right or wrong, it's personal.